ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم Verily all praise and all thanks are due to Allah. We praise Him, we thank Him, and we seek His help. We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves, and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our sins. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees to guide, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees because it's fit for that person to be left astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there's only one God worthy of worship and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was his final messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran al-Kareem, يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. Oh you who believe, be God conscious, have taqwa of your Lord, the way it is deserving to Him, and do not accept as Muslims. Meaning, do not accept in a state of sincere submission and obedience to the divine will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thy not accept in a state of submission to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a universal call when He calls mankind, Muslims and non-Muslims. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is not only the Rabb of the Muslims. And He's not only the Rabb of the humans. He is the Lord of all the worlds. The ones that we know about and the ones that we do not know about. Alam al ghaib wa shahada. Right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls on mankind, the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal nas, taqu rabbakum. الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رسولا. O mankind, be God conscious of your Lord, the one who was able to create you from a single soul. And was able to create from that single soul its mate. And was able to create from both of them a multitude of men and a multitude of women. A multitude of believing men and a multitude of disbelieving women. And believing women and disbelieving men and disbelieving women. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of all. And he calls on the believers again. Because when Al Islam is a combination of Iman and Am and Amr. It's faith, belief, and work. It is not only Iman without actions. But it is, it is, it's a complete way of life. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls on the believers and He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqu Allah wa qulu qawlan sadeeda yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhulubakum wa man yut'illaha wa rasoolahu faqad faza fawzan azeema O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and only say that which is right, even if it is against your own self. 
have taqwa of Allah and only say a good word. Only say that which is right. And Allah tells you what He would give you in this dunya and in the akhirah. The benefit of saying that which is right. He says, Yuslih lakum amalakum. He will manage your affairs. So no need to worry in this dunya. He will manage your affairs. وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ And will forgive you your sins in the Akhirah. And then Allah gives you the ruler for which we measure success. وَمَنْ يُتُعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا Whomsoever obeys Allah and obeys His Messenger has definitely obtained the ultimate success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the successful people. ثُمَّ مَعْبَاتِ Brothers and sisters, today contemplating a little bit on the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A day like today, 14 years ago, I was like a regular youngster in this country with no Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with Hidayah in 1999 by Allah's decree. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with wonderful parents. My mother before she married my dad was a nun. Then she had some questions unanswered that made her leave the convent. And she married my dad and had me and my two older brothers. But she always taught us when you wake up, you say thank you to God. Before you eat, you say in the name of God. Before you go to sleep, you make a prayer to God. So we had that upbringing. My father wasn't educated, in life he was. He worked, he has worked since he's 11 years old. Working in the sugar cane fields in Puerto Rico. And he has, he was blessed with a character. He was always helpful to my mother. Didn't have bad habits would always play with his children, and on his day off, he would cook, or he would clean the house without being asked to do so. And this is what we read that the Prophet used to help around his household. I, the Prophet used to play with children. So I saw this, I learned from this character, so this is the same that I wanted for myself. But being raised in the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, being a youth with parents both working, you end up a period of that time of the day unsupervised, which is from after school to seven. And that is the time when the youth get lost. So I got involved with that company went a little bit astray, became a gang leader, and saw friends of mine get killed the day after being with them. The only thing that used to come to my mind was every day when I woke up, am I going to die today? Am I going to go to jail today? Am I going to catch a disease today? because I didn't have a purpose. I didn't know my purpose. So subhanAllah, when I was in this gang, a friend of mine was with me in the library and he wanted to read the Quran. So I told him, why don't you check it out? He said, I checked out the maximum number of books. I said, okay. So. So maybe next time I said, if you want it, it's okay, I'll take it. So I ended up 
stealing the Quran from my friend. That's, that's true friendship. Right? So I stole the Quran and gave it to my friend. And during that time, my friend was staying in my house. Once he moved out, and I experienced the death of my friends, and I began to, I lost trust in all human beings, I turned to God. I turned to Allah. And I said, Ya Khalid, O Creator, Khalaqtani, you created me, and you know me better than I know myself. And you know what I need better than I do myself. Ikhtarli, choose for me the right way, and I will not look back. I'll leave everything behind. I had a music contract, I put that aside. I just wanted his dad. <coughs> then I remember that I had the Quran in my house, and I went to different churches, so I got six Bibles, and I began looking, searching. And at that time, I didn't want to ask the human being. I said, the human being is weak. The human being might know my faults and my use against me. But Allah is forgiven, God is forgiven. So let me turn to Him. And let me ask Him for help. So as I began searching, I opened the Quran and I come across an ayah that made for me all the difference in the world. When I was asking myself, who do I pray to? Who do I ask for help? And I read the ayah, You alone do it, we worship, and you alone do we ask for help. I said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to ask no human being for help. And I continue reading the Quran in that. When I read the next ayah, <laughs> and I read the commentary of the Quran that I have, it said the first step, is to look for the way. It's difficult. Every religion says, this is the hub, and this is the hub, and this is the hub. Right? So now you have to look for it. Once you find the right way, the second step is also difficult. It's to make the decision to accept that way of life. And we know, we know what happens like in Ramadan, right? Right, Ramadan, the last day of Ramadan, the masjid is full. And what happens after him? It goes back to the same. Why? Because the day of Ramadan, Fudi had a bab of Jannah, or Bulu had a bab of Nar, or Sufi had a shayati. When Ramadan comes, the gates of Jannah are open, the gates of the Hafa are closed, and the shayati are chained up. So, subhanAllah. So, I then it said, once you accept the right way, the next need, the third step is to stay. And it's also different. And then it gave a similar to that the right way is like a mountain. And when you go up and you make a mistake, you have to start over again. You slip, <coughs> you have to start over again. I said, I'm not going down. I lived a life turning away from hardship. Whenever a hardship came up, pick up a bottle of alcohol. Whenever a hardship came up and kept turning away and turning away to such an extent that I was surrounded by all these hardships that I turned away from. And I said, no more. I'm going to face the hardship. And whenever it pops up again, I'm going to learn how to go by it because I already defeated it. And I strove for it. Upon my reading of the Quran, I came across ayat and I took the Quran as Allah talking to me. And whenever I found a command, a command in the Quran, I would make the effort to implement. I didn't know no sunnah. I didn't know how to. So the Quran said, 
Fasting is prescribed for you. So I began to fast, but I wasn't as lucky as you. I didn't know that there is Maghrib, right? And you stop at Maghrib. I will fast until Isha. I will fast until I felt pain. Whenever I felt pain, then I would eat. Because I said, I'm not a hypocrite. I know I have food in my house. I know that I have food in my house. <laughs> so I said, let me fast to feel what the poor people feel. Those people that don't know when they're going to receive food. <coughs> so I began to try to discipline myself. And through that fasting, <coughs> it served me as a rehabilitation. I left gradually alcohol. I used to smoke two packs of cigarettes a day. I left cigarettes gradually, with the darbush, gradually. But I was making an effort. I was fighting myself. I was fighting myself in order <coughs> to get close to Allah. Came across another ayah. The, the Quran in Fajr is witness. So I began to wake up with everybody. So you imagine nobody in the house is Muslim. The only thing Islamic is the Quran. So I began to wake up when everybody in the house was sleeping. I, I used to turn the dim light on and used to read the Quran. And I used to keep it between me and Allah. And gradually that sacrifice, after reading for like one hour, then would go to sleep, then find my parents waking up, getting ready to go to work, I already felt accomplished. While they're just starting their day. So, I kept doing this for nine months. <coughs> Came across another ayah about salah. Began to pray just by making sujood and begging Allah for guidance. After nine months of reading the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with making the choice to accept Islam as a prayer. <coughs> Alhamdulillah, after accepting Islam, began to share a little bit of what I used to learn. I learned from the Quran with my mother. And one day, upon getting married, she comes up to me and says, I miss your reading of the Quran. So I said, why? I asked her why. She said, because the questions that made me leave the convent were answered by the Quran. I said, really? So what do you mean? Do you believe in the Quran? Do you believe that there's only one God? So if you accept Islam, you're not, you're not uh, changing your faith. You're just purifying it. Because the way of Allah is one. Allah's deen is one. The message of all the messengers, messengers are, is one. So she said, yes. So I asked her, why don't you accept it? It's very easy. Just say two sentences. And Alhamdulillah, in 2002, my mother decided to accept this by Allah's decree. Alhamdulillah. Four months later, <coughs> my dad chose to accept this Alhamdulillah. So you imagine, I accepted this in 99. From 99 to 2002, how many times I spent crying in the masjid, worried that my parents would go to the outfire. And some of us blessed with being born Muslim, sometimes don't feel that when we see our relatives or friends that are not making salah. Right? And we are ummah, a ummah that is commanded to command what is right and forbid what is evil. Because we believe in Allah. So Alhamdulillah, upon accepting Islam, I became engaged in the work of Dawah. And then then after we take a moment to make dua, inshallah, we would conclude, inshallah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah.
Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashabu al-Musayyamu ala ahim wa sahbihi ajma'in. All praise and thanks are due to Allah, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon His final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His companions and all those who follow Him until the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, we have an amana that we have to fulfill. Every single one of us in this masjid has this aman. Because there's no more Rasul. There's no more Prophet. We have his way, right? his model, his example. We have to invite to the way of Allah. We have to call, invite, those who do not know about Islam to Islam. And not by preaching, but also by modeling, showing the way, showing what showing why they should be inclined to Islam by your actions, also, by your good deeds, by your patience, by your kindness, <laughs> by your rahmah. Right? The Prophet was sent rahmat al so we should be merciful to our children. <coughs> now you imagine there's two trains and there's one train going to the hellfire. And we're in a train going to Jannah. Right? And these people are heading in that direction. And we are cross-handed letting them go. What about if the train switched? And we're on the other train. Wouldn't we like to be saved? Islam reached many of our countries because people had Iman and they were concerned. You see the diversity that we have here? This is by the, by the struggle that the, the followers of Rasulullah undertook for the love of this deen. <coughs> And if we live up to this amana, then we earn the wonderful, noble status that Allah gave us. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَائِلَ اللَّهِ And who is best in speech than one who invites to Allah? وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا And works righteousness. And then when he is asked, why do you do this? Why are you so kind? Why are you so generous? Then the only response, وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Verily, I am of, of, of the Muslims. Brothers and sisters, there is a very important organization that has been serving this Dawah worldwide. This organization is Islam in Spanish. One of the reasons for me relocating from Northeast to Texas was because I met Brother Mujahid Fletcher when I was studying in Egypt. And SubhanAllah, we spent sleepless nights talking about Da and the work. And from my understanding of this Dawah and what I experienced and the efforts that we made in the Northeast, there's not an effort like it. Even in English, to have over 500 audiobooks in Spanish. Some may say, what is the need of the CDs nowadays? Two thirds of the population in South America you know, have, have no access to the internet. They're very limited. So they, they, have, they have need for the CDs. You have a whole village, a whole town that only possesses a set of the Qur'an in cities, in 26 cities, for the whole village. And they appreciate it. And they appreciate it. And there are people who are entering Islam. In America, there's approximately, according to statistics, 
from 100 to 200,000 Latino Muslims. <coughs> and there's only a handful of people that are taking care of them, that are traveling. There's a dire need. Can you believe that in New York there's not even one organization catering to the need of Latinos, Latino Muslims? In New York, in Houston, the Latinos became the, the majority, 43.8%. We have three classes going on. Right now, currently two classes. Hood does in Spanish. But we're also serving South America, Colombia, Mexico, Puerto Rico, all these countries, giving them libraries so they can learn because they don't have teachers to teach them. So they use the videos and they sit and they learn and they take notes and then they send us questions. People who want to be saved, who want a way of life. Brothers and sisters, tonight in the, in the embassy suites, we will have a gathering which is the 10 year anniversary of Islam in Spanish. We have Imam Siraj Wahaj, Noman Ali Khan, and other, other guest speakers in the embassy suites in the DFW International Airport. Please join us, inshallah, for this wonderful event, Bidnilah, starting, starting at 7 p.m. The flyers are outside. There is material about Islam and Spanish outside. There are CDs. If you can't attend, you have the opportunity. Like one seed that can benefit you. You don't know the Sadaqajaria. You don't know where that seed will go and which seed will sprout. We have to throw as many seeds as we can. And have hope. min Allah at tawfiq We have hope that Allah accepts it from us. That Allah accepts our sincerity in this effort. And that if we die, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts us amongst the righteous, amongst the prophets, among the shuhada, among all those who are among the salihin, to raise us, up, raise, us, us, raise us up amongst Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma adina fi man hadayt, wa afina fi man afayt.